As the Cincinnati Bengals are closing out their season with a 7-5 and five record, five games to go, every game is like a playoff game. And this week's opponent, the San Francisco 49ers, who the Bengals have lost to in the Super Bowl twice. My 1981 team lost to the 49ers, and my guest, Tim McGee's 1988 team lost to the 49ers. By a combined total of nine points, two Super Bowls lost by a total of nine points. As you can see, tough pill to swallow. But Tim and I will talk about that. And then most importantly, this year's Cincinnati Bengal football team and how they take care of the San Francisco 49ers, send them back to the West Coast, moping a little bit. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. We're in our unbelievable studios, as always, at First Star Logistics, and we got an unbelievable guest, Bengals wide receiver Tim McGee. And, and Tim, welcome to our, our little show here. First and foremost, we appreciate you giving us some time. Well, first first things first, hey, man, I'm I, I'm I'm out of I'm a I'm a fish out of water in the trenches. I've never been there before, man. <laughs> you get dirty in there, man. You get dirty, you get hurt. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, and it, I'll tell you, it's real important this week, man. Just like every week, there's no doubt about it. But uh, let, let's talk about uh, about Tim McGee here a little bit. You were at uh, Tennessee when it was wide receiver university. I mean, there were a lot of really good wideouts coming out of Tennessee, and and when you graduated from Tennessee. You are the career leader in catches, yards receiving, touchdown catches. That's pretty good stuff. I mean, what, what do you remember most about your time spent at Tennessee? The most memorable time in Tennessee is how, where we started and where we ended. Um, when we started there, uh, we wasn't a very good football team, and, and the university was coming back. And we, we were known for some individual players, but collectively as a team, we wasn't rise. We hadn't risen to the point where we would be in national contention, and we quickly changed that. And from my freshman year all the way to my senior year, we got better and better and better. And my senior year, we ended up uh, number three in the country, and we beat the uh, University of Miami in the uh, Sugar Bowl. Actually, we we thrashed them in the in the Sugar Bowl, bowl thirty five to seven. Did I say we beat them thirty five to seven? I, I just that, <laughs> God, that just sounds so good. <laughs> and so when you look at a career, a college career or a pro career, high school career, and, and you know you wasn't we wasn't the best team, and to be able to grow and build the program to what it you know turned out to be in a couple of years after I left there, you know they won the national championship. So you know that's that's something special. My, my time at Tennessee was, was awesome. It was phenomenal playing in front of 105,000 screaming, uh, orange and white fans. Unfortunately, I had to listen to Rocky top. I still hear it in my sleep. Oh my gosh. I I don't know if I want to use that one as a, as a plus, cause it's, uh, you, you know, you're talking about, uh, uh, getting a heavy dose of Rocky Top, and, and we 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 did just that. So great time in Tennessee, great people, great fans, uh, great atmosphere. Uh, you know, it, it individually, yes, things went great for us. But you know, when you had the Willie Gaults and the Anthony Hancocks and the Clyde Duncans, Lindy Taylors, they they paved the way for us, and you know, passed the baton to, to myself and and Joy Klinskills and Eric Swanson. We passed it on to Carl Pickens and Anthony Miller. So the list just was going on and on. And yeah. yes, it does hurt that we were, as in past tense, known as wide receiver university. And several schools are claiming that now, but I guess we're going to stick the, um, we'll, we'll insert the word original university uh, Tennessee being the wide receiver university. That's right. You guys were the first. There's no doubt about that. So you get drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals in the first round based on your stellar career at, uh, at Tennessee. And in uh, 1988, the Cincinnati Bengals put together a pretty good roster, and you're a big part of that. You have uh, 36 catches, 686 yards, over 19 yards per catch, 19.7 yards per catch, almost two first downs on every reception and, and six went for touchdowns. I think your long was like 78 yards, I think, something like that, your long reception on, on the year. You were part of, I mean, 
a skill group that was unbelievable. Eddie Brown, Tim McGee, Rodney Holman, Boomer Esiason, James Brooks, Icky Woods. I mean, whew, you guys, you guys were loaded, man. You, you know, when you when you say that, I, I, I know we'll talk about the present team. Uh, we get a lot of comparison, and I, I think that's complimentary on, on, on both sides. But the balancing act of those that talent, that skill set, and more importantly, from the coach's standpoint, how they were able to, I guess, cater to all of our egos, because we have them, and there's no, yep. there's no question about it, we have them. But to be able to do that balancing act and, and, and have everyone buying in, that's what made it special. It made it special because we did know, like, when we went into the game, you know, the coaches give us the top 15 and everybody had to play, and which, which was phenomenal because what it did was it kept everybody mentally engaged in the game. Sure. And I, I'll, I'll never forget Bruce Cosler would always say, hey, take advantage of your turn because if, if, if such and such gets hot, you know that's where we're going. So if it's my day, it's my day. If it's Eddie's day, it's Eddie's day. If it's Chris' day, it's Chris' day. So, you know, we were really cognizant of the fact that, yes, we had a lot of skill positions. We had a stream amount of talent. And, you know, it, for us, it was a matter of managing it and managing our egos. And I thought Sam and Bruce did absolutely a wonderful do job under those circumstances. We have uh, something in common and in involves this week's opponent, the San Francisco 49ers. We were both on teams that won AFC championship games, but lost Super Bowls to the 49ers where, you know, geez, could have won them. You know, I mean, it, it was it was one of those deals where it was the, either team could win the game. And unfortunately, you know, we didn't get it done in either case. It was interesting. Uh, the team I played on 1981, we started out five and three. And we lost. We had just lost to the New Orleans Saints, and 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 they weren't a very good football team. And we're thinking, you know, geez, who are we? And then all of a sudden, we have the November to remember. We're in the calendar year. Five games were in that month of November, and we win them all against really good football teams. Like, whoa, I guess we're all right. You guys start out six and zero, oh, and I remember the New England game. I lose that game to New England, uh, and and then and then finish. Uh, I think what five and three down the stretch or mm -hmm. something like that. So it, it was almost like opposites. We started slow and, and kind of caught a little fire. You guys caught fire early and then hit. When when did you guys know you were really really contenders? That that this Super Bowl thing was real talk, not just talk. I, I think because we had such a quirky year the prior to with the, we had strikes and you know we. We were in such turmoil, so to speak, and, and we kind of banded together. We ended up having the longest season at the time from a pre from the Hall of Fame game preseason all the way to the Super Bowl. So there was a lot of factors that went into that. But I think the turning point for us is when we went to play in Philadelphia against the great Reggie White, the late great Reggie White and that team. And we knew they were Super Bowl contenders. And yes, you, you said it so, so, so well. You know, you know, when you look at that schedule, you know, teams that you should beat on paper. You look at you look at that schedule, you go, OK, we should win this game. We should. Win. And you look and go, wait a minute. We have put ourselves in this position as long as we don't get on a losing streak of a, with a magnitude of five or six games, we can qualify for the playoffs. And, you know, anything will happen in the playoffs. Anything can happen in the playoffs. So I think the Philadelphia game, I just think our confidence just rose to a point where, wait a minute. Uh oh. If we play our game and we don't beat ourselves, it's just typical football, simple football. We had the ability, yes, we were very, very, very good at the beginning of the year with the passing game. Yep. But what came on? Icky Woods, yep. James Brooks, the run game. The run game carried us. And then our defense, we had that, I want to say perfect balance. It obviously didn't go well in the, in the one game. But when offense, when the offense wasn't playing well, you know, our defense was kind of a, unheralded they were you know they were underwhelming from people's standpoint and opinions but when we needed them the most they carried us and, and that's what you have to have you have to have all facets of the game clicking and when you look at Stanford Jennings touchdown in the uh, Super Bowl offensively we didn't do jack nothing we were we were we were just not ourselves for whatever reason and the special team stepped it up and that's what you have to have when you're going to have a complete football team and yeah you know unfortunately those doggone 49ers beat us twice and you know, that's that's history. And I, I, I have to say this, Lap. People ask me about the Super Bowl. What is it like to play in the Super Bowl? And I'm pretty sure you get the same question. And I always go, right. it was the best time going to the Super Bowl. And it was the worst feeling I ever had 
after a sporting event that I participated in, you, you get to the pinnacle of success and you know you're there. I'm not talking about playing, participating in the game. I'm talking about knowing damn well if certain things doesn't go wrong, right. you win that game. And yep. we didn't have the football gods on our side that day. And uh, so, you know, forever I look back and, you know, they give you the AFC champion ring and I just go, it's very difficult for me to wear that thing. <laughs> I'm proud of it, but it's very difficult to wear the participation trophy. So it's, it's, it is what it is. I hear you. I hear everything you're saying. I, I think I've said all those same words, just like you have in, uh, it is, man, that uh, that runner-up prize ain't the greatest, but complimentary football, like you talked about, that's what I felt like, you know, when you have when you have a successful season, normally you have complimentary football. Every phase is complimenting the other one and, and lifting it up when need be. And, uh, and same question, the one that's asked to me, I'd say, you know what, that Super Bowl, that was the highest I've ever felt emotionally in my life and the lowest I've ever felt emotionally in my life in the same day ever. I was so geeked up for that game. I could have lifted the stadium, you know, never mind, you know, play. I could have, I felt like, man, the adrenaline rush, I had it too soon. I'm like, I was almost tired before in the locker room before the game. I'm like, man, I hope it comes back. And it came roaring back, you know, but man, those surges of adrenaline are crazy. And then when you lose a game like that, oh man, lower than low, man. It's just. That's a hard thing to bounce back from quickly. I remember I, my son was five years old and uh, tucking him into, into bed in the hotel after the game. He looks up at me, goes, Dad, why'd you guys stink so bad in the first half? I wanted to just, <laughs> I'm like, hey, Dave, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have a kid talk about it now. We'll talk about it in a while, man. I just can't talk about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, that, um, that was, that was an, an, just a, a, I hope everybody though, has the opportunity to experience those feelings, you know, I mean, that's why you do it. Right. That's, right. that's what it's all about. Right. It's, it's, all about. There's, there's, there's no question. When you look back, it's a very memorable moment in your life. And, but just like you said, I, I, I remember on our, the drive to the stadium, it's trying to control the emotions because I had played in so many football games throughout the years, big games, you know, yep. nationally covered game, but it, 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 the moment was right for us. So it wasn't like it was too big, but nevertheless, you're so, it's like, man, can they just flash us to the stadium so we can hurry up and play this game? And just the night before, just sleeping. But like I, like you said, I, I can't agree with you more. It's, it was the biggest high and the biggest low. I, I just remember, man, I still got this visual walking off the field knowing damn well we should have won that football game. And Jerry yeah. Rice was standing there up on this podium giving <laughs> interviews, and I thought I was like, he stole Eddie Brown's moment. He stole Eddie Brown's moment because Eddie being from Miami, I, I wanted nothing more than Eddie to shine in that game. And But, you know, things just didn't turn out our way. I know. It's just, man, I, it's it's so vivid. That's the thing. I mean, I can remember every single play of that stinking game, every single one of them just like burned in my memory bank and in the good things that happened, the bad things, why bad things turned into bad things and all, all that stuff. It's like, that'll never go away, I guess, but no, no. Yeah. So I hope, I hope that, uh, this team makes some restitution on Sunday. I'd love to see him thrash the 49ers and give them a long flight back home. There's no doubt about that. What do you think about this season's football team, the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, uh, Tim? What do you, when you take a look at? I know you do, you do a lot of work with WLW, and you're a fan, and and, and you do a lot of uh, radio work. And what do you think about them? You know, it's I'm I'm high on them. There's no question. I I, I want to make sure I establish this this up front. Right. I came into this year, and I always with with WLW, I I try to do a theme. What's the theme for the Bengals this year? And it's been so invisible leading up to this year. And I, I felt that this was the year of expectations. I felt this team had a nucleus of players, young players nevertheless, but they had a nucleus that they don't know no better. I, I, and I said this several times, they don't know about Pittsburgh. They don't know about the traditions of losing. I thought Zach Taylor and Duke Tobin did a wonderful job in getting rid of the guys. And, I, you know, I'm sorry to see some of them go that may have had that mindset. That, oh, here comes the Steelers again. Oh, you know, we, we, we're going to be in the catch position. This core of players did not and do not understand that, oh, we had these losing streaks and, and we had bad luck and there's a black cloud over Paul Brown Stadium. So my my thought pattern going into this season, I didn't know where they would be, mm -hmm. but. 
I was afraid of the inconsistency because, again, they're young. And you know, right. you've been on the football field that no matter how talented you are, it's a long year and you're playing against professionals. And when I, I'll use Jamar Chase as an example, when you're on a high and then defensive coordinators in his particular case, they start, you know, on, on, on Monday, they start game planning you for you. And you're like, wait, wait what, what, what just happened here? So, you know, I, I just felt this team has done so much for not just themselves, not for not just the management, but for our community. Our community is back. It is you are so daggone happy on Sunday morning at one o'clock or four o'clock to turn our local team back on. And we know they can compete with anyone on any given day. Now, what we don't know is which team's going to show up. Yeah. But nevertheless, we know if Joe Burrow and company come to play and the football gods are on their side, they not only can compete, they can win every single game they line up across the line of scrimmage from their opponent. And I love that. And I just think football is back at the, in, in Cincinnati. And I, I I think the sky is the limit for this team. I think they still got some, ste- some steps to climb. They still got some things to clean up. Mm-hmm. They still got some the maturation process still. But the nucleus is there, lap It's there. What do you think about about Jamar Chase? And, and you played the position for eight years for the Cincinnati Bengals, nine years all told uh, in the National Football League. When something happens, like happened to Jamar Chase, where a 71-yard touchdown pass because of, you know, trying to catch it twice, as he described it, and bobbling it, and it turns into an interception where there's a swing of, you know, minimum of 10 points, potentially 14 points. They went down and kicked a field goal, so it's a 10-point swing. When that happens, how tough is it to compartmentalize, put it away, and move on? First of all, it's impossible. You have to acknowledge it. You have to accept the emotions because negative emotions are just as important as positive. You have to know what to do with it. You can't separate them out and go, oh, you know, I'm only going to celebrate the, the highs and, and I'm not going to get down about the lows. You have to manage that. You know that. We've been been there and done that. You, you got beaten. Somebody did a rip move, a rip technique on you and got beaten. You just, you, you just can't go and say, oh, you know what? Let me just take that out of my, delete that out of my database in my head. No, it happened. So you learn from it. So let him learn from it. And I, like Joe Burrow, I think this, this kid is just so freaking talented. I mean, he is a freak when it comes to, and I mean a good talented player right. when it comes to his skill set. But there, there's always the pains of the learning curve for a young player. So yes. Okay. It, it may have cost the game. Who knows? But that's when it's so important for your teammates. How many times have we as offensive players turned the ball over and our defense in, in, in our own territory and our defense had a stop and it made us feel good? It's kind of like, oh, I fumbled the ball. I dropped the pass. I missed the block. And the defense goes in and stops the offense. And you make it like, man, thanks. That's what teamwork is all about. So as Jamar Chase grows into his experience, I just think if if we don't put so much undue pressure on him, you'll just continue to see him grow and grow and grow. But there's going to be some setbacks. I mean, just like preseason, remember, he was the biggest bust in the preseason. Every, every, people were getting down on him because he dropped three freaking passes. You know, right. all of a sudden, he's the worst pick in the history of man. Now, then he went from the worst to the best, and he's probably somewhere in between. But his support and cast is going to be so important for the Joe Burrows and the Joe Mixons and the leaders, the Tyler boys to say, hey, man, listen, that's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you a lot. He reminds me so much of Eddie Brown. Mm. It is it is scary. We knew in practice. We knew in games. Eddie was a big play wide receiver. And we knew we could run that pepper play action for play action right. pass for people, for people that don't know. Right. And we knew there was probably an 80, 20 percent chance that he would catch it. He could catch. But right. we knew Eddie had the propensity to sometimes run before he secured the ball. So that's going to happen. So with a Jamar Chase, you go, OK, wait a minute. This guy is going to give us more big plays than bad plays. And we have to live with the bad plays. So let's just go out and play. So Jamar Chase, uh, I asked him earlier in the in the week here in a press conference, I said, you know, when you were at LSU, there's no way you weren't doubled. I mean, there's no way they didn't tilt coverage to you. I mean, you guys won a national championship, and you and Joe dominated. They had to have 
tried to do something. He goes, well, they, you know, they moved me around and I lined up in different places. And that that's great when you're the guy by, you know, this kind of a margin in college. But when you have other receivers that are already in those spots that are, are being paid to do their job and they're capable of doing it, it's a different dynamic. I mean, and, and like you said, the key to your successes uh, as a group in that 1988 season is they can't double everybody. So whoever they decide to tilt toward, I mean, if we're one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to have to eat, man. We're going to have to win and, and make plays. That's what has to happen with this group, too, because they're all talented, right? There's no question about it. And you look at the three-headed monsters of the receivers. You have T. Higgins. Look how he's built. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, slender, can go up and catch the ball, will go across the middle, very yep. talented. Probably a number one guy yep. on most teams. You look at a Tyler Boyd. He's been a number one guy. He's working the middle of the field. Now you bring in this young stud, and he is a stud, and now how do you complement each other? That's the most important, to understand that today against this team was your day. Now how do you feel when you only catch that one ball in 12 yards and that T. Higgins had 185 and Tyler Boyd had 95 and three touchdowns? Yep. How do you feel? Are you buying in psychologically? I can tell you, Lap, I had to grow into that experience. I saw Eddie grow into that. I, Chris was the older of the three because there were times from a competitive, internal competitive standpoint, you know, you look at the stats and, and for people that don't think we, we know what the stats is, we know what the stats are during the game, okay? We know them. And you see, wait a minute, I only have 40 catches and Eddie got 140. Man, I want my balls too. And sometimes you'll pout like a little baby. Sometimes, but that's where it takes a great coach and great coaches to uh, to get you to buy in that there will be some days will be your days and some days it just won't be your day for whatever reason. The, like you said, the defense can tilt the coverage and say, we're going to pick our poison. Someone else is going to win. And you have to suck it up. But it's, it's, it's easier said than done. And I just want to make sure of that. So he'll grow into it. He'll understand. Trust me, Jerry Rice was double covered his entire career and he still has ended up in the hall of fame he'll figure it out trust no me doubt. he'll figure it out no question about it i agree he's got too much physical talent and you know um he, he's he's got a good mind for football as well he, he's sharp he's a sharp-minded young man how how important is a quarterback that has people skills to help manage that sort of thing when he's distributing the football like boomer had and like joe burrow has these guys are natural born leaders they just know how to, you know, deal with people. They have great people skills. How important is that? It's it's extremely important in that that it can't be falsified. You and I both know, and, and everyone's just listening, every single you know when you're being when the BS is, you know, coming <laughs> right. down your leg. You know the you know the difference. And you you know when someone's being sincere and genuine with you, opposed to just feeding you a script that they they've rehearsed in the at home and they're trying to feed it off. You understand that. So when you have that natural leader, and Boomer was the most natural leader I've ever been around. I mean, the guy, right. just, he just, he had it, and I can't not define what it meant, but he had it. I mean, he he, he was able to get you, and, and it's like a good coach, and you know this, like Jim McNally. A, a yep. Jim McNally was able to take an average guy and make him better. He was able to take a superstar in Anthony Munoz and make him a Hall of Famer. He was able to take a Dave Lapham who, who, who needed leg work or footwork, or here, and he was able to make you better. That's what leaders do. And I just think it's so important that Joe Burrow and like Boomer leads by example. They don't lead by mouth. They lead right. by example. And they're treating men like men. And that delicate balance in a leader it was very important to me as a, as a former player. And I know it's got to be very important to them. And the last piece of what they're experiencing, they're going to have to figure out how to win consistently week in and week out what to expect out of each other. That's the one part they haven't put together. But, you know, for those who think that all of a sudden they were going to have every phase of their game together, that's just delusional. It's They're, they're going to take two steps forward and a step back. It's going to happen as long as, like I said, as long as the Joe Burrow-led Cincinnati Bengals do not run in the five-game, three-game, four-game losing streak, they'll be fine. Sure. Well, they got 17 games now. You know, it used to be 16 games, Four games every month, there's four quarters, you know, and, and now with four games left that you're in the fourth quarter trying to finish the game. Well, now there's the fourth quarter in overtime. There's five games, you know, there's, a, there's an extra game now. 
So, but it, when you're in that stretch, you know, November and December football, now into the month of December, now because of the scheduling, it turns into a little January football. That becomes huge. And and people talk about it all the time. I mean, it's, you know, one week at a time, you compartmentalize. It's like you try to go one and oh five times. But literally, right now, they are in a five-week playoff situation. I mean, every single game, they have to approach like it's a playoff game. And uh, how difficult can that be? Well, it can be extremely difficult. But th here's the upside of that. Everyone in the top tier of the National Football League, AFC, is in the same predicament. Yep. No one can lose three games in a row. No one can afford to lose three games. You think of – use our arch nemesis, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's use them as an example. They're still in the playoff hunts. They were terrible in, in, in five games. They were absolutely awful. Yep. And they tied the Detroit Lions, but that just goes to show you what's special about the National Football League is the fact that parity exists. There are not going to be a team – for the most part, they just run away with the NFL. It's going to be that week in and week out. And we know luck equals health. Health <laughs> equals luck. If you are healthy, you are lucky. If you are lucky, you are healthy. And going in, like you said, going into this latter part of the season, this and including January, if you are not healthy and you can't run the football, more than likely you will tell off. People will knock you off. You have to be healthy. And I think the Bengals have been so blessed with their health. Now yeah. they're getting nicked up a little bit. We, 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 we see that. But they've been very, very fortunate. The oblong football has bounced their way. That's great. They're going to continue to need that. But things have changed, man. Like you said, this it's no longer you can look at that schedule at the end of the year and go, okay, we're going to win that game. We should win that game. No. I mean, every single game is going to be a dogfight. And they just have to be up to task. If you're not up to task, you don't deserve to go to the playoffs. 12 of the 16 teams in the AFC are 500 or better. 75%. 12 of the 16 are right in the thick of it. 500. There's not, there's not an AFC team with less than four losses. Nobody. I mean, it is, it's anybody's, uh, anybody's playoff positioning. That's that there's no question, no question about that down the stretch of your Super Bowl season, Boomer Sias, and, and it was kept pretty quiet during the course of the actual time that you guys were playing, but he had a little bit of a shoulder problem that became, you know, a little bit tough for him to deal with and perform to the level that he performed at uh, earlier in the season. Joe Burrow now is fighting a little bit of this pinky issue, as a as a teammate, as a wide receiver, how do you help a quarterback that might be, you know, not quite up to snuff physically? Well, first of all, it depends on his his maturity level. Like for example, we talk about Boomer being a leader. I didn't have to say anything to Boomer. He handled right. himself. You know, obviously, his, his the person he answered to was his wife Cheryl. So we <laughs> we know and understand that. I still wanted the football, but again, lap. You've been around. You've called a lot of games. You know there's a simple formula in December and now January. You must run the damn football. No doubt. You have to run the football. The, the quarterback can take the ball from the, from the center. He has to be able to hand the football off. Yes, there will be some opportunities, but there's and you're, you're hearing from a wide receiver who knows and understands December football centers around the run game. Yes, you will be able to sprinkle some passes in there. And if you're lucky, you'll have a 60-degree sunny day and you can go back to the past. But Burrow is going to understand something, that handing that football off to that stud, Joe Mixon, is mm -hmm. going to be hit the best formula of success they can have. But that's hard. That is so hard when you got so much dynamic skills on the outside. You want to use them. You know, it's like, oh, I want to use them so bad. But you have to just – Calm yourself and pace yourself and manage yourself. And, you know, for the most part, uh, fighting through that injury, you know, you can tape it up, you can go. But, I mean, this kid, I mean, this kid is tough as they come. So he'll get better and better. And, you, and you know, outside of the first day of training camp, there's always something wrong with you. There's sure. always an injury. There's never a time you get up and you get up at night to go to the bathroom to go, whoo, I feel good today. <laughs> it just don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's the, that's the last time you feel normal physically until the off season is the last night before training camp starts. You, know? <laughs> you go to sleep and say, "Man, I feel good." That's the last time for a long time. <laughs> exactly. Like, man, I, I, you know, it, it, 
you, my, my wife used to always just walk, watch me go to the bathroom and be like, <laughs> how do you do this? <laughs> yeah. Get up and it's like the tin man. Oil can. Yeah. I'm like, I got to start lubing up here. A little bit. <laughs> like, uh, what are you doing? I'm going through a system check. Uh, I'm trying <laughs> right. to see what's worked and what doesn't work. <laughs> right. Right. Oh man. So I, I agree with you. I mean, particularly in the AFC North, the AFC North with the weather, everybody's in the same, you know, in the same geography here. And, and I mean, uh, toughness, physicality, that's the name of the game. Uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be that way every week. I mean, I'm excited to see how this thing unfolds. What, what do you think uh, quickly about the, uh, the Bengals defensive side of the football? What's your take there? I love it. I mean, what, and let me tell you some preseason on the radio shows. I had, all, I was wondering, oh, are they going to make a change on defense? Cause they wasn't getting it done. Right. And coach Lou found something. I mean, he, he dug deep and, and, Zach Taylor made a, a phenomenal decision not to make any moves. And mm -hmm. I, I think we all expected a move on defense. Now, again, I, I'm never one for someone losing their job, but we expected something to happen, some change. And he stuck with it. So that tells me they knew something. They knew that with the right personnel, the scheme they would run would be successful. And it mm -hmm. has been it. I'm going to tell you what sticks out more so about the defense than any other thing for me. They look like they're having fun, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, they truly look like it is genuine, sincere, fun, flying all over the place, making plays. And when they get down, I mean, it's going to happen. Remember, defenses don't know where the offense is going, so the offense does have the advantage, and everyone wants the defense to, to not give up a point. But they come back. And, and again, I, I said this about the offense. It's the inconsistencies that drive coaches crazy. Why are you in the right place? At the execution part, they're professionals. You know that sometimes I, you know, in, in my career, my my personal feelings was, yes, I'm not going to win every battle. But when I did, I wanted to have a 19 yard per catch average. So I moved the, I moved the chains and from the defensive side. What they have to do is continue to bend and not break, not give up the big plays. But again, if that's lap, you know, that's easier said than done. And with so many exotic schemes and rules that benefit the offense, let's just face it, it's it's hard for a defense to do. But I just think they've done an outstanding job uh, from last year to this year. It I just I didn't expect it, and I give my my kudos to you know Coach Lou and and that staff. They've done a great job. They really have. I mean, they've they they really the only guys left from uh, three years ago, basically, are, are, are Sam Hubbard and Jesse Bates. I mean, they turned everything else over personnel wise, yeah. and uh, they, they they can rush the passer. Hendrickson and Hubbard that tandem is 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 really good, and up and down the line of scrimmage, they're good. This is this is the one that gets me though, Tim. Uh, I think in terms of when we're talking about complementary football, the offense is 19 giveaways. Three of them have been return for touchdowns, two pick sixes and a fumble taken back for a touchdown. So defense can't do anything about that. But the other 16, they've only given up two touchdowns in those 16 giveaways and seven field goals, seven possessions. They give up no points, two punts, a missed field goal. They stopped them on downs, three interceptions. And one of those interceptions after Joe's interception was a pick six going the other way with Mike Hilton, the very next play. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, and, and they were, they were given the short field, plus territory 10 times having to defend a short field, only giving up one touchdown, one touchdown, six field goals, made him punt. There's a missed field goal and an interception. That, that's, that's unbelievable, man. That's just, that's saying, you know what? I, I'm, I'm putting out the fire. They're like Smokey the bear. They put out so many fires, man. They've had to answer so many fire alarms. It's unbelievable. That's big brother got my back. That's, you know, that's one of those, I can make a mistake. I can go out on the street and I, I can say some things that normally I know I can't back it up, but you know what? I got these guys <laughs> right here. <laughs> I got my, I got my big brothers and, and they got my back. And let me tell you, you know what that does to a team yep. that builds confidence that builds the people. You can't describe chemistry. You know, chemistry has a definition, but you hear that term as, as it pertains to sports, good chemistry that makes good chemistry when you know you're when something bad happens because it's going to happen you're going to face adversity you know and it could be play to play it could be series to series it could be game to game it's going to happen but to know you have the confidence or your defense has the confidence that you'll come back and they are put like you said they're putting out the fires man 
I mean, <laughs> hey, when you have the, they can call, you can call them the Power Rangers, man. They're coming to the <laughs> rescue, man. And what, what more can you say, Lap? I mean, serious, you know, yep. sometimes it is so demoralizing to have that quick change of possession. Defense, okay, we stopped them. There's a punt or whatever. We're going, okay, we're going to get, we're going to make our adjustments. I'm going to go get me some Gatorade, you know, get, get refreshed. Oh, no, you're back in the game. You know, defenses yep. do not like that. And as offensive players, we don't look them in the eye. We look, we look the other way because we know they're pissed at us for putting them in a compromised situation. But if they're coming back and you you just said the stats, man, that's a job well done. And when they're in a compromised situation, they're back against the wall, they're producing, man. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, two two big words. Chemistry is is one, obviously, and the other one's momentum. Man, you know, I mean, momentum's, in my mind, maybe the most powerful thing in sports. And You know when you have it. You don't mm -hmm. want to lose it. And when you lose it, you're real sorry you did, you know, yep. and, uh, and, and, and they've, uh, they've had their experiences with that. They've captured momentum, lost it, captured it back. And I think that's, that's the big thing to me. Like you said, the final five games here, you can't get in a negative momentum for, a, you know, in staying in a valley, there's going to be peaks and valleys. There's going to be highs and lows. There's going to be lulls. You can't stay in a lull for a long period of time. Right. You got to figure out a way to get back up and recapture some momentum. No doubt. As coaches always some somebody got to make a play. Yep. Some, some someone has to make a play, and what they're learning through this playoff stretch is all these cliches they've heard. You know, you hear coaches say these things, finish it, and and you know, perfect practice makes perfect, and all this stuff. Now they're going to see if you apply these things and and reduce or limit the amount of mistakes and don't give the other team short fields you're going to see the games, the disparity in the scores are not going to be 41 to three. It's going to be that last second. And this has been a great, if you're a football fan, particularly a Bengal fan, th this has been a great year to watch football because, you know, any team can win on any, you know, any given day. And that that's more prevalent now than ever before. You know, the thing about this last, last game they had against the chargers, there were a lot of lessons to be learned in that football game. And, and one of the lessons from a positive standpoint, there were a lot of things that you have to, you did wrong, obviously, and you have to learn from, but one that you did well, all right, you're down 24, nothing, and you come back and make it 24, 22. So, I mean, it, it's like, that gives you a, a, a sense of down the stretch. We're never really out of it. We just got to get ourselves off our schedule. We can't, I mean, these teams are all good enough to beat us. We can't help them. <laughs> we can't be contributing to the fact that they might win the football game by making turnover mistakes, penalties, missed assignments, all that stuff. So you just got to get cleaned up. If we stay out of our own way, uh, they scored 22 points in less than 15 minutes. It's like, you know, come on now. Well, as my dad used to say, don't put no more hurdles in the, in the race because uh, you're going <laughs> to lose, bottom line. And you know – and I said this uh, several times on, on our broadcast at the postgame show. They're good. The Bengals are good. But yep. They ain't that damn good. You're not good yep. where you could spot any team. I don't care if it's the worst team in the National Football League. They have professionals. And things may not come together, but you cannot bury yourself in a hole because two things. Number one, it's so hard to come back. And if you're so fortunate to do so, you expend so much energy yeah. and effort to do so. Now, if there's any more time, you're gassed. So, you know, you just can't afford to do it. And that's the definition of inconsistency if you're playing from behind. But it's good to know that you have the, the firepower to get yourself back in the game. But an ounce of prevention will go a whole long, a, a lot longer away than getting yourself in a 22-24 uh, point hole. You just, that's not something you can, you can even think that you're going to come out on top most of the time. No question. I mean, there's very few teams in the history of the NFL that on a very regular basis can do that. Nobody has that kind of margin for error. I mean, there's very that you you can't. It's less than one hand the number of teams that you could say could handle that type of margin for error on a on a regular basis. I mean, that's just that's tough sledding there. So you feel good about this football game on Sunday, Tim? What do you think? I do. Um, now there's a uh, I have strong motivations like you. You know, people. I, I, the fan base don't like Pittsburgh. Me, I don't care. Pittsburgh don't mean as much to me because we we would beat them. So when you when you've been in the trenches, right. them, you beat them before. It's like that don't mean nothing. But when someone takes your heart, the 49ers have taken our hearts, you know, near and dear, personally to the two guys on, on this telecast. That yes, there's there. I, 
I, I feel very confident. This is the one that I want. I want every single time. Now, I'm not one of them that go and say, I want the 49ers to lose every game. I just want the Bengals to beat the 49ers every single chance we get because, you know, they've taken our championship away. They have, you know, played them only 16 times, but only four and 12. Yeah. The, the, uh, the 750 winning percentage that the 49ers have against the Bengals is the best that any opponent has against the Bengals in their history. And two of those are Super Bowl wins. Son of a sea biscuit, but whatever. And, and, and there was so much, you know, there were so many connections with Bill Walsh and Sam yep. and all that. So you kind of was looking at yourself in the mirror there. And so, yeah, uh, you know, from I, I, I think with the exception of the Kansas City Chiefs, <laughs> I think you can argue, arguably say that the Bengals may be the most talented team they on the football field the remaining of see uh, the remaining of their schedule. But that means nothing if you don't go out to e and execute. Baltimore is hurting. Cleveland is hurting. I mean, they let's just face it, their roster has changed so much. They're not the same teams that, that they were at the beginning of the year. So I, I see the Bengals. But, you know, Lap, as I say this, it's so frustrating. It's super frustrating because I said this last week. <laughs> you know, I said it last week, and it's like you you have to play at a level that's consistent. And if teams reach or meet that level and they beat you, you can say they outperformed us opposed to, you know, knowing the outcome of that game is because you underperform it. And I think the Bengals un underperformed last week, and I, I hope we don't see a repeat of that. I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, you look at it, the Chargers um, going West Coast to East Coast. I think that's the toughest way to travel. I think East to West. I would agree with that. Going west to East is brutal, and and they've got a winning record. So do the 49ers. The 49ers have done it four times already. This will be the fifth time. They beat Detroit. Okay, well, whatever. They go to <laughs> Philadelphia, beat them. They beat Chicago. They haven't really had – they beat Jacksonville. Um, and uh, so – you know, you, you look at it and you say, well, that, 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 that's, uh, that's pretty good. You know, that's their, they've won every single game that they've gone east, but they really haven't been challenged yet. Let's see if they can get their first loss going west coast to east coast against the Cincinnati Bengals. Tim, can't thank you enough. Great stuff. Um, you're, uh, you, you were successful as a football player and successful like Paul Brown would always talk about. You know, football is only a short period of your lifetime work and uh and you got to be able to do something else after football he was always very interested in what guys did from their post-playing career and you've been a, a success there as well and congratulations to you and your family my man hey i sure appreciate it but i i don't think paul was recognizing that uh in the uh the year of 2021 contracts would be signed for 100 and 500 million dollars <laughs> so that's back in our days when we had to do some these guys like they got what's called generational wealth no doubt. I mean, if they're smart, man, you, yeah, you're taken care of for quite a few generations. And yeah, I mean, off season jobs were a must, man. <laughs> you, yeah. you get bills to pay, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> like the end of the year, it's like, hmm, where yeah. am I going to get this job in the off season? <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, I sure man. appreciate you having me, Dave. It was wonderful. I had a good time. Thank, thank you, Tim. You're the best. All right. You too, brother. We'll see you. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right, you know? Yeah. You know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.